Like many of you watching, the Forward Promise Village of grantees, the fellows, and the National Advisory Committee members have pivoted in these past few weeks to respond to the rapidly unfolding crises created by the COVID-19 pandemic. We wanted to talk to those who directly serve our most vulnerable communities who have been hit hard by this pandemic. We also wanted to know about how their work is being impacted and how they are responding. Welcome, my name is Howard Stevenson and I'm the co-director of Forward Promise. Today we have with us Vanessa Hernandez and Kate Teague of the California Youth Connection. Uh, Vanessa serves as Deputy Director of Advocacy and Impact and shepherds the organization's legislative package to actualization while developing youth into leaders who harness the power of their voices and experiences. And as a lead community advocacy coordinator, Kate, works with the CYC chapters in LA County, providing technical assistance to support CYC members in developing their leadership and putting their campaigns for change into action, both locally and regionally. I would also say that for more than 30 years, CYC has been at the forefront of a fundamental paradigm shift in child welfare policy in California and beyond, placing foster youth voice at the center of policymaking for the first time in history. So welcome to everyone. And thank you, uh, Kate and Vanessa for being here. Thank so, you, excited to be here. Great. So the first question I wanna ask is, how are the youth that you serve, foster youth, being impacted by COVID-19? And what are some of the unique needs and issues facing them at this time? Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to start by talking a little bit about the advocacy CYC has done over the past two years. For the past two years, we've launched a campaign called Foster Stability, hashtag Foster Stability. And that campaign was really centered around stability in all aspects of a young person's life. Um, when my members who are currently in foster care or formerly in foster care started talking about stability, my mind jumped to placement stability. So my mind went to, okay, how can we ensure um, we're doing better compatibility and matching and my members were very clear and pumped the brakes and they said no we mean stability in all aspects of our lives we mean it in our relationships in our health and wellness in our education in our services how do we create a youth-centered system where that is the number one priority so as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic <clears throat> that work and that foundation is critical to the conversations that we're having right now a single bed or a place to be is not sufficient right we know that the COVID-19 pandemic is impacting folks um, wellness their mental health their relationships and so when we have this conversation I think it's easy and clear to point out that this is impacting our children and young people on every level possible and um, it raises the level of um, urgency because the impact is going to be far beyond this three months this six months these could have lifetime imp impacts kate did you want to jump in yeah and i think that specifically for foster youth um you know foster, going into a system like the foster care system um, already is a significant disruption um, and mm -hmm. the COVID-19 response has really escalated those disruptions even more. So, you know, even things like being able to visit with families, right? So in pre-world, pre-COVID world, um, <laughs> visitation with siblings and with families, there were several protections in place. Mm -hmm. COVID response has ramped up, a lot of those protections are no longer in place. Um, and so one of the first things to be canceled was family visits and um, visitation with siblings. The other thing we are seeing is as um, guidance is coming down from the federal government, from the state government to the counties in terms of how they're supposed to be working with youth during this time, um, there's a disconnect between the guidance that's coming down and what that means and how it's being interpreted by county agencies and community-based organizations like foster family agencies or group homes um, about the implementation. 
And so youth, and as Vanessa was saying, we would really like to see a youth-centered system um, that the youth-centeredness is not happening, right? So um, these policies are really creating conflicts mm -hmm. in terms of um, if somebody uh, were, um, so if the guidance is that there shouldn't be placement changes during this time, right? So sure. it doesn't mean that foster family agencies or transitional housing programs are implementing that guidance right now and maybe oper operating under the business as usual model, which is um, if somebody hasn't been um, in, in placement in the last 14 days, but they may not have been in placement because they were on a family visit when the shelter in place order went into right. action, right? And so yes. what does that mean? <laughs> um, yeah. The other thing is I think that, you know, as foster youth have also been impacted by the school, um, not going to school anymore, right? So that was another place for many folks where um, relationships were important. So both with mm -hmm. their peers, but also the positive adults that they interacted with in school settings. Um, the flip side of that is folks who are already somewhat disconnected from school are now even more disconnected from school. Um, and for foster youth in particular, who moved around a lot and have experienced new school settings and may not have had time to really um, be a part of the school community, the social distancing and the shelter in place has even further disconnected that. Um, mm -hmm. Access to educational supports, right? So for folks who have different learning styles or for mm -hmm. school, the school setting may not have been working well in the first place. Um, sure. they need special education supports. Again, like none of, mm. not, um, very little of that is happening now. And, and that is certainly impacting foster youth experiences. Um, it seems like everybody's talking about the new normal uh, as if it's some kind of entity and disregarding how the old normal was kicking people's butts left and right. So in some respects, we've forgotten about those dis those old disparities, that these new disparities are somehow new, but they're just exacerbated and, and made worse in the way you describe it. You also describe that you have a sense of what not only at, um, foster youth struggle with in terms of relationships and disconnection from, from agents, institutions like school, but how the system might also rethink its policies and practices and how uh, foster youth are assigned or moved. Um, I understand that also, um, you know, California Youth Connection is unique and that many of your staff members are former foster youth. Do you have ways of how you work with your staff to help them navigate this kind of crisis? Yeah, um, I can jump in. I am also one of those staff that has lived experience. I grew up in care um, between the ages of four to 18 and emancipated at the age of 18. Um, mm -hmm. I, I definitely think there's more we can do as an organization to support folks like myself and my peers who have these experiences. Um, currently, I think the strongest um, the things that have been most helpful is the sense of community and staying connected to folks as we're existing, moving forward, working through our anxieties or um, our emotions throughout the day, um, mm -hmm. to know that we have proximity to folks that get it and understand it, um, that we could reach out to is probably one of the best things that um, CYC offers. And I would say that also is mirrored with our members, whether it's formal programming or not, um, our members are staying connected. And uh, that's a beautiful thing in, in a time like this where reaching out to folks um, is sometimes the best thing you can do all day and having that human connection and realization that it's not a single isolated um, thing that's happening. This is happening system wide. And I have friends, I have allies, I have positive relationships I can reach out to. We can talk about work, we can talk about the policy reform, or we can exist and spend time together. So mm -hmm. I would say there's more we could do, but right now that's the, the best thing um, we're offering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Kate, did you want to talk about that at all? Or? No, I feel like Vanessa summed it up pretty well. Awesome. I mean, the Great. piece of it is this COVID-19 situation has really been calling into question, I think, for a lot of us, what yes. we need to do differently. And um, 
has certainly been um, just as the larger systems we're thinking about how the inequities are existing um, also within the organization. Um, and I definitely um, think it's really important not just during this time, but then also as we get back to whatever the new normal would look like, that yeah. we can take in mind um, some of the things that have come up during this time and work to address um, those pieces too. Um, so sure. there are gaps yeah. and we need to get better, right? So. <laughs> Well, you know, having said that, what would you, if you had a shot of what the hope, uh, of what the world would look like after this, what would you recommend? And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to tell the stories of, of our lives, you know, let's, let's, let's also dream ahead, perhaps, and say, what, what would you recommend for, for your community and for your young people, uh, for them to manage this better, or, or survive and thrive through this better? Yeah, I can jump in. Um, I think in this moment when I can think about best case scenario, um, the, the urgency is so important at this moment. We have young people in foster homes of folks they probably don't know that well. Um, we have young people who feel very distant and far away from their communities and people that they love. And so when I think about the best case scenario is that young people are, are in communities that um, rally and are connected and are healthy and happy and that they feel connected to um, folks that have their best interest in mind. And so to think that a young person who grew up in Los Angeles is placed in humble, which is a very different landscape and a very different mm -hmm. reality, um, mm -hmm. yeah. compounded with not knowing folks and not going to school, it's so multi-layered. So I think what we would want to kind of create or continue to push towards is that young people are in safe, loving homes full of people that love and care for them. And they're in their own communities uh, mm -hmm. where they have uh, you know, a soccer coach they can go to, teachers that are positive relationships for them, church, extracurricular activities, being in foster care, um, the system can in some ways strip all those things away where some of the only mm -hmm. relationships you have are your caretaker. And if you're in a group home, that's your house parent. There's two mm -hmm. staff per two staff people per eight to ten young people. Um, and your social worker and maybe your attorney. And that is such a bare um, detrimental mm -hmm. way to exist completely. So um, something yeah. I'd work towards is uh, communities of origin, happy, healthy, and surrounded by people um, and relationships that have already existed prior to the system ever intervening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kate, any final statement or thoughts about this? Yeah, I, I feel like we are in a moment where we can dream big and um, have a little, have a window right now where we can push for things that uh, we weren't able to really push for before. Um, yeah. And I think that really being able, as we are both trying to keep our ourselves and our family, whatever that may look like, healthy and in community with each other. Um, we also have this opportunity to really push forward some things that may have seemed like impossible before. And so I really do hope that as we are um, in this time, that we are also looking towards our, to our, our community and in our case to the CYC members about what is it that we really should be working together towards right now because um, I think we have we have an opportunity. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, as yeah. this, as much as this has been a crisis, I think we also um, can can really get some victories out of um, this period in time. So and fantastic. Um, so um, thank you very much, Vanessa Hernandez and KT California Youth Connection. We're so happy you could be with us and. And we are praying for you and wishing you all the best. Thanks for this opportunity. Really appreciate it. And looking forward to hearing from others. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you.